Hello, my name is Max Kozel, and I'm a student at IBCC. And for my Mimic project, I made this. The squirt shot. <laughs> now maybe you're wondering. Now maybe you're wondering. <laughs> now maybe you're wondering, what is this? Well, I know that the virus is kind of going around everywhere, and people just want to be safe. So if you're in a store or something, and you see like a, I don't know, like this, item that you want to touch or look at, it's just actually not safe to do so. So I made this as a quick and easy way to like use it on items. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> we could see. But yeah, yeah. Now I'm going to be saying, why not just use like a little perfume bottle just like this one? Well, I designed the squirt shot in such a way that it's way faster to use and less of a hassle to use. So the, there's a button on top that's supposed to allow it to like be pocketable without it spraying liquid everywhere. Unlike a uh, perfume bottle which needs a cap on it to let it not go wild in your pocket. Because yeah, this works. But then it's just a hassle to take off the cap, put the cap back on. But this, you can just whip it out like a cowboy and just <laughs> go ham on any object you want to spray. Jeez. I made this with uh, parts of a, of a toy, like, squirt gun and little perfume bottles just like this one, too. And, yeah, I also cannibalized a glue thing, I don't know, for the shell. And even open stuff. So I can take a look if there's anything wrong with it. Uh, the total price to produce this from what I made is $5.50, but $4 is contributed to, to the shell because the object I stole it from cost about $4. The water gun costs like a dollar, and then the spray bottle is like 50 cents each, so those aren't expensive at all. So I'm pretty sure I could get down the price to like, like I could probably sell it for about five to seven dollars, probably around that point. And not only can it be used for sanitizing things, you can put any liquid in here and have it be sprayable. But what else could you use it for? Well, you can use it for like soap if you're washing dishes. Just feel like being lazy, you could just. Spray it on an object, and wipe it off, and put it away. It's supposed to be very easy and easy to use. And thank you so much for considering my choice <laughs> in a mimic project. <laughs> All right. Questions? So, yeah, questions. Can you refill that? Oh, yeah. Wait, how does it refill? You can take off a little bottle at the end. Oh, OK. I can take off this bottle with the spray and put it in this too. Works just fine. <laughs> so you can have spares in your pocket, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course. Or you can just have ketchup and mustard in one. Just use it if you need a burger. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know suggest using ketchup or mustard. It might uh, get a little clogged. Yeah. But Any other questions? Why not yeah. just take a squirt gun and fill it with hand sanitizer? Like, how's, how's your thing different than that? You want to be seen around having a s squirt gun? Like, <laughs> well, the, like you the way you're out. pulling it out of your pocket is making me goes like, nervous, too. Ah, yeah. I'm good! Uh -huh. No, this is just supposed to look like something, something that's supposed to be mm -hmm. in the pocket. Squirt guns are not really pocket friendly. They have like a lot of tabs and like weird design to them. This is supposed to be smooth all around, very easy to pocket, very easy to pull out and spray. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I can tell you're enjoying doing the, the quick draw. <laughs> <laughs> I thank you. I know. It's quite fun. Okay. It's so fast that even a cowboy would use it. <laughs> mm, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, so, uh, when you were going to mass produce those, were you planning on maybe modeling or 3D printing the actual base? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. So they could be customizable too. We could use mm -hmm. a Cricut or we could use embossing or engraving. 
Yeah. So, another product that we can kind of work on. Anybody got any suggestions? I don't know. I think it's cool. Yeah. You know? It's handy. I, I, I think to, if we had the mass produced today and some of the other products coming out, everybody has a little COVID theme going on here. Yeah. So, okay. Well, Good job, Max. I guess it's. Uh, hi, my name's Aaron Bondergathen, and I made custom deck box with my laser engraver at home. Uh, I'm going to show the purpose of the product, the assembly of the product, and the cost of the materials, and why you should purchase it. Uh, it can hold up to one to two decks. Uh, it will keep your cards in better condition. You can put any custom logo you want it or paint job, and it will make your cards last longer. Uh, that picture on the screen is what it looked like in the program Laser Burn. Uh, so I had, we had the me and my dad designed the laser burn thing. Well, he did the laser burn coating. Then we cut it and engraved it. Uh, then we had to clean the wood, and it goes together kind of like a puzzle piece. So you just put it together. Oh, this is a video of a time lapse of it engraving. You should just hit the button. Oops, go back. Any suggestion? Put the mouse over on top of it. Yeah. The Use the mouse. There you go. See the arrow down at the left? Oop. Oh, go back. Okay, so. Yeah, just move your mouse around and the arrow should come out. Whatever you did before worked. Click on it. There you go. See the arrow? This one? Uh huh. Try clicking on it. There you go. There you go. Try this. Okay, now try. Just click on it. And then you'll have to go back. No? I don't think it's going. It's loading. Okay. I think the we don't have a quick time. You know what, go ahead and finish and we'll watch it after. Or, do you know how to fix it? How do I put it back in the... Um, down at the bottom, over to the right, there's a... $11 and each deck box and the, the Trump suit cards, that's for the game Euchre. They cost about 50 cents to make and the whole process takes about 20 minutes depending on the engraving you put. I put... Uh, Fairly simple one on it has all the suits and uh, my name on it. Uh, you should purchase the deck box because it's more durable. You can personalize it in any way. Because if you're like my family, we all fight over the deck we want because it has like a picture on the back. Uh, it can fit two decks in, so you can bring it somewhere and play with someone. Uh, it'll keep your cards in good condition and comes with specialized cards for the game Euchre. Okay, anybody got any questions? Are you, how many can you make before Christmas? <laughs> <laughs> it only takes like 20 minutes. I mean, that's, it's pretty cool mm -hmm. and very mm -hmm. customizable. That's very Yeah. No, the video. Um, do you have your laptop with you? Or? Because I'd like to see the your engraver. I'm jealous. I love I love stuff like that. I love 3D printers. I love engravers. I love engraving this one because the engraver cut out all the pieces too. So it took about 15 minutes. And then it burned it too. Uh yeah. And it. now you said you and your dad designed the program or uh some of it. He found some parts online, so we did that. But we we did do the the name and this logo right here. And we have a, my mom has a Facebook page called Crafts with Crystal, and there's a bunch of stuff like this and really? tumblers. And <laughs> the with like engraved stuff, and she makes signs. So. Does it have like a way to keep the lid from opening? Like if I toss it in my bag, will the lid open? 
not this one. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure we could add one. This was a pretty simple design. And we could add this to the COVID. Uh, when you're okay. drinking wine from your bar, <laughs> you can play cards. Okay. That's actually yeah. why the, the yeah. Trump suit cards are in here. Because, well, at least for my parents, when they're playing with their friends and they're all drinking and stuff, they forget their suit cards for Euchre, so you just look down at it. Oh, I wonder what that was for. Hmm. Nice. Pam has a question. How does it hinge? Uh, it's actually, you put one side on first, and there's a little wood piece, and then you'll just put the other side on it snaps in so there's it's only wood in this wow that is cool very nice okay good job yeah. All right. <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> hello my name is Tim Polly uh, this is a paintball shotgun conversion barrel I will be explaining what it is and what it does and uh, why you should buy it uh, here's the outline. Uh, I'm going to state the purpose of my presentation, the purpose of the product, the product description, the pros and cons, the costs, uh, my conclusion, and any questions. Uh, purpose of presentation. Present my memory project to all of you uh, to accurately, accurately describe the product, excuse me, the softwares. <laughs> um, describe the product in its purpose and its physical description. To present the pros and cons of the design. Uh, and to present the cost buildup of the product. All right, so the purpose of the product. Uh, is to, uh, the primary purpose is to create a fun new paintball experience. Um, if anyone has played paintball before, they know that um, there's pretty much one type of gun, and you know they all do the same thing. They all shoot one paintball at a time, and it's fun and all, but you know it, it like to mix it up a little bit. Um, that's like the second point here, is diversify weapon options in paintball. Same sort of idea. Um, you know, uh, to potentially have the advantage in close co close combat scenarios. Um, when you're playing paintball, it's not really often that you get super close to each other. You're usually kind of uh, separated, you know, while you're shooting each other. Probably about, the closest you'll get is probably about here to, well, that's not too, too close, to the end of the end of the, um, end of the uh, room. room. Um, you know, any closer you might get, might get a little, little more hurt. Um, yeah, but it's also to encourage close quarter play because you know, you know, you have some people up front, some people further back, and it'll, it'll be easier to get to move forward a little more. You know, you can get up close to someone and shoot them real close, and it's not going to hurt them too too much. Um, and you could get a few more people than just one. Um, so yeah. Uh, anyway, product description: It is a modified pinball barrel. So the way this works is you uh, unscrew your uh, other barrel. Now uh, that would be on your typical tip the ninety eight custom, or likewise. Um, um, you unscrew the other one, you put the unscrew screw this one in. Um, it fires in a paintball, like a buckshot type shotgun shell. Uh, the way I made it is um, you um, would put in a like a toilet paper uh, holder, uh, if that's what you want to call it, a wad, and then a few paintballs. Um, it works best with uh, with one wad. And, and um, eight to twelve paintballs, uh, sixty-eight caliber paintballs. You, um, you may want to get small, uh, less or smaller paintballs, like fifty caliber. That'll definitely shoot far farther. I haven't tested it out yet because um, I haven't got gotten to testing it out. Um, it's made of ABS material. It's pretty sturdy stuff. Um, you know, you can throw it around, whatever. Uh, I wouldn't suggest that you open it and smash it like this, like my brother did. Uh, <laughs> so I had to glue it back together. Um, so yeah, that brings me to my next slide, the pros and cons. The pros, uh, it's highly effective at close range, we've already <coughs> talked about that. Like I said, um, you know, you, there's a bunch of people, you can get up close and bam, shoot them, get like three out at a time, potentially. Um, easily portable on and off field. So if you've ever played paintball, you know that you might want to bring uh, pods uh, for you know pouring pouring paintballs into your hopper if you run out. Um, this could be put into a pod and uh, carried on and off the field really easily. Um, it's lightweight and durable, um, so you know you don't really it's, it's no hassle. Um, cons: non-standard rounds. Like I said, you can't really buy these rounds. You have to kind of make them yourself. 
Um, unless someone were to, to decide to, um, you know, make them standard. At the, at the moment, they're not standard. Um, single round fire. So you open this up. You throw one. You throw one round in. You fire. You got to do it. You do it all again. But still, I imagine it'd be worth it. It'd be fun for me. Um, I'm sure anyone who plays paintball would love to do that too. Um, potentially, like you said, time. So if you're in the middle of the game, a match, and you uh, throw, you, you, you run out of paint, and you got, but you got this, and you got your, your ammo. You still got to take off that barrel and screw this one on. So you know someone could take the advantage and maybe get you out or whatever. Um, so those are the few cons that I've, I see potentially. Um, cost. So the main shaft and cap, which is, I would say is this part here, costs around 10 bucks. I wasn't able to find that out, um, but judging from what I read online, it costs about 10 bucks to make the, the 3D print the, the part. Uh, the catch drop, this thing here, came in a bundle of two, it was five dollars, four ninety-nine, you know, close to two fifty um, each. One one inch bolt to hold the uh, cap and shaft together, um, one lock nut to hold the bolt down. Um, the cash job is at, or, sorry, excuse me, the bolt is 40 cents, the lock nut is 12 cents. So it's about 15 bucks to make, a little less, maybe 14. Um, you can sell it for 20 and make a 33% profit or whatever. Not 33, yeah, something like that. Um, so, yeah. In conclusion, this paintball shotgun conversion barrel is made for fun to experience in paintball. Um, like I said, nothing like this has ever been made. Um, it's it's pro it's a um, I, I just, I've never seen it. Um, and it's fairly expensive to build. It's potential to make a profit. So um, yeah, it's uh, I, I think it's a very uh, awesome new sort of invention. You need to get a patent on it quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Serious. So uh, yeah, there is an old glory attached to my paintball gun. Any questions? Uh, does it actually work? Yes, it works, um, but okay. it it needs smaller rounds to make a. It, it's it's too heavy. The the uh, 68 caliber. It's just it's too heavy, and I think too much air is escaping when I fire with 68 in there. So it needs 50 caliber rounds, and possibly a smaller smaller shaft. Yes. Okay, so how does it, I'm not a paintballer, so how does it work? Does it like bust open the end cap? Yeah, well, there's uh, the, the standard rounds that I've come up with. I suppose I'm going to have to make a presentation for that too. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> it's like a, in, a, in a toilet paper tube. Oh, I see what you're saying, okay. Yeah, yeah, so then um, there's like a, a film, I guess you could say, maybe toilet, maybe toilet paper itself or like a napkin. Okay. Uh, I use like, you know, tissue from, from like a, like wrapping the like paper tissue, or whatever, uh -huh. um, and then there's a. I forget what I, I just I just said what it is, but basically like a plug you put in there, okay. so that um, it it can it goes out with the paintballs. Okay. Like if you've ever shot like a, a regular gun, you know that the shells like for mm -hmm. buckshot or birdshot right. come out like with a long little little plug, it comes out. It, that's just to, that's just to push it. Okay. Um, so yeah, it's basically like that. Um, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. I don't know much about paintball, but where do you load the paintballs at? Where do you what? Where do you load them? Oh, you load them uh, into here. Okay. Like I said, you load you load the um the um, toilet paper roll. Toilet paper roll. Yeah. <laughs> through the end. Yeah, through the end here, and then and the paintballs go in with it. Uh, you know, the toilet paper roll is there to, to hold the paintballs like in your pouch, or whatever. So, yeah. so to reload, you wouldn't have to take it all off. No, no, okay. no. Yeah, yes, that's what. Yeah, that's why this is here. So, yeah. So it's like a musket. Oh, pretty much. Pretty much yeah. like a musket. Yeah. Shotgun musket. Yeah, shotgun musket. Yeah. You know that thing go well way back in the you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but good idea. I like that. Yeah. Well, and with paintball, the reason you're so far away because even if you get hit from that range, you got in the face, your eyeballs would like explode. So. Well, yeah, that's why you wear masks. Yeah, you know? but I'm just, mm -hmm. why would you want to be closer to that? Uh, that could cause serious injury. Anyway. Well, it, it, like, when you are, with something like this, uh, all the pressure isn't going to go flying at you like as if it were like from here to there. Um, there's going to be a lot less pressure, 
So you need you need to be closer to for the paintballs to burst, and it won't and it won't hurt you like, you know, because there's less pressure. It's not gonna hurt you as, as much as it would even from this distance. It's like getting hit with a shotgun instead of a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> So I suppose my, my <laughs> uncle got shot with bird shot on his face, so um, he's totally fine. <laughs> picked him out. He's picked yeah. him out here, yeah. I, I can see it, it you know, you, you can come up on a group or something like that and get mm -hmm. them all. Mm -hmm. I've never done that. Does it hurt when you get shot? It hurts. It leaves a little well, but, you know. So why do you do it? I had a bruise the size of a baseball for two weeks. Oh my gosh. I basically had like only boys. Huh? I had like a third nipple. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> Is there different clothes you can wear so you don't protect a beer? You can't uh, wear. <laughs> I mean, like some people run out their shirtless. Oh my gosh. <laughs> some yeah. some crazy people. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, the, you know we got this COVID thing going, and it's surprising that we got guns in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, you know, it's an outdoor activity, right? you're, You know, you're kind of socially distanced, right? Yeah. So you know, it's a well, you're outside right? and yeah. you're yeah. got masks on and paintball masks. Paintball masks, yeah. yeah. So it's pretty safe exactly. COVID yeah. sport. Um, yeah, it is a fun sport. <laughs> hey, a question. So. Will that throw around like any paintball gun? Is it pretty universal? No, it's like it can't. Um, there's different threads for each paintball gun. Yeah, the one I use is for a Tipman 98 Custom. There's a few versions. Mm -hmm. This one is a uh, Tipman Stormer. Um, it has the same like thread as mm -hmm. 98 Custom. Uh, I think A5s have them too. Tipman A5s. Um, I can't think of any, any any of any else. But there are converters you can buy online. Mm -hmm. Like you sc screw this in, there's like another converter. I don't know if there's ones for this thread. So if I had that like an A5, not an A5, I can't remember, um, like a Griffin converter, uh, it, can, it can go on to tons of different ones. That's, so. a, that's another part you could make with it then. You can make like adapters to fit the different oh, models yeah. of guns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too, yeah. Oh, yeah. And he did make the threads himself, and those of you who do solid modeling, you know that was quite a feat. Mm -hmm. I, was I was very was impressed. <laughs> Because I don't know, the, I, I probably could do it after a few tries, but yeah, um, it, was, it, was, it was really if hard. If I had to. I, I, it, the, um, I noticed that there was kind of a, uh, in the regular barrel, there was kind of like an ink, I don't know what it's called. A draft. A draft, yeah. Um, this one didn't have a draft, so it kind of rubbed, all, rubbed a lot of the paint off of my inside of that. Mm. Um, but it's all smoothed out now, so, mm -hmm. you know. There you go. Going out awful time. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. Good. It's a good job. It's a nice product. Uh, I don't play paintball, but maybe next semester we could all get together and play paintball. That'd be fun. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think that'd be great. <laughs> Are you allowed to have two guns in uh, paintball at all? Or not? They don't, I mean, it just depends on where you are. They don't really care. You oh. can, people have like dual, dual wheel all the time, so. so yeah. Well, maybe you should just slip that on like a really smaller gun. I suppose, yeah, I guess you could do that, yeah. Do like, yeah, and then like maybe even have onboard storage on the gun, so you can just hop swap it on there. I like, mean... Make it automatic? Shotgun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Good job. All right. Good job. All right. My name is Gabriel Graham, and I designed a wand and mask holder. This is specifically for COVID-19. It's a big idea. So, <laughs> starting concepts was, was just to make um, an easy touchless form of like disinfection, right? So you don't have to touch something, you don't have to spray it with some sort of liquid. Right. All you have to do, <laughs> normally this would slide, so you just slide it out, the light turns on, slowly wave it over whatever you want to touch, and it disinfects the area. So then you can touch it without worrying about that kind of stuff. And then the mask holder is just a little, a little gear basically. <laughs> You can put it behind your head and then it holds your mask straps so they don't cut into your ears or like flip them out really far. Mm -hmm. Just as both. It's just to make wearing masks a bit more comfortable. Because some people they got a lot of problems with standard mask sizes. So you can do that. Okay. The target audience for this kind of uh, stuff. Mainly parents of really like young children, infants, because they're at risk to COVID more than older kids. You can use this light to just disinfect things. You can actually use it to kill small insects. 
Yeah. The UVC light waves, so you can just mm. shine it over and it'll penetrate their cell walls and kill them. So, not the nicest thing, but it's disinfecting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, parents of young children, elderly people over the age of like 45, 50, they're, it's not the most elderly, but they're more <laughs> at risk. So, okay. and anyone not with offended. a damaged or suppressed <laughs> immune system. So, it's just a little wand, you don't have to touch anything with it, you can just flick it out, wave it, flick it back, put it in your pocket, and it's small. It would be a little bit short on that. But you can just tuck it away, take it out. Easy to use. I like this. <laughs> but yeah. So, uh, the main design of this is just when it extends, the moment it reaches its full extension, the light automatically turns on and provides UVC light, which is disinfected. And it can easily slide into a smaller forum, so you can throw it in a purse or your pocket or a bag or something. It's not in the way. And it has currently just a USB slot here. You could change it with a, a mini USB, so you can just charge it with that same cord you used to charge your phone. And you quick and easy that. Here's a little drawing for it. So you can see the whole thing is a little over seven and a half inches tall extended, and then about four, a little over four inches lengths. Close down like that. The mask holder is just a very simple little gear mechanism basically. It's got two arms that can extend out behind your head and then come back. So depending on how big your head is, you can adjust it. And yeah, it just holds your strings back there. It's a much simpler idea. And that you can 3D print the whole uh, product with that one. So it wouldn't cost very much either. So that's about it. Any questions? I didn't go over price for this. I'm pretty sure for all the parts I could get it under $50, I think. But, I mean, to be safe, I could definitely get it under like $75. Oh. So. And the mask holder would just be the yeah. cost of the plastic? Yeah, it's just the cost of the plastic. It's ABS would probably work. I have a question. What is it about LED lights that kills germs and bugs? Ah, it's specifically UVC light. UVC. Um, yeah, ultraviolet light with, I don't remember what the C stands for, but there's UVC-A, not UVC-A, UVA, UVB, and UVC versions of light. UVC, um, all three of them get emitted by the sun, but only UVA and UVB make it through our ozone layer, so that's all we have contacting our skin. UVC light is reflected off, and when we artificially create it, it pierces through most uh, cell walls of our organisms because we're not used to that kind of light. So it can kill a lot of tiny creatures. If you were to take it out and expose it to your skin for a long period of time, you might burn yourself with it just because it's not a natural light that we receive. Hmm. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. I was uh, very skeptical because my 3D printer runs with UV light and yeah. It hardens polymer, so um, like, how could it kill a germ? But yeah, it's just the UVC specifically. So it's actually alternating cell, or all, yeah, yeah, alternating. Yeah, or it's, alt it's got a shorter and faster light wave that's going on, I guess. So it just. Yeah, Are there any long-term effects? To no, I mean, if you do happen to burn yourself or damage your skin, it'll go away in a few weeks. It'll be like a sunburn, nothing more. Probably not going to give you skin cancer. Probably not. That's, that's what I looked up and that's what I said. Oh, so. that's good. Yeah. That's good. And I really like the little gear because you could just have it on yeah. your head and just turn it without just adjusting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, question? Yeah. Uh, why are you using USB and USB mini? Why not use USB Type-C? I could. It's just a little bit more expensive as well. That's the only... Thing. I, mean, I haven't put USB it in there C anyway, is so. much more commonplace than USC Mini because everyone kind of hates USB C. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's Mini. Yeah, Mini USB. But USB C is really nice. So. It's and a good less board. expensive? Good board. I'm not sure if it's less expensive yet, but it might be soon. Okay. So, uh, as far as the charger goes, you need a cord, a USB to USB? Yeah, this would okay. just be a female port here. So you would 
Okay. Like, just take your phone cord, plug it in, and it will charge. And how, how long would it hold the charge? I'm not sure yet. I'd have to look at, like, get specs for the batteries I would use, see how long they would last on a full charge. But probably, I mean, if you held it on, mm -hmm. it would probably last for a few hours, and you wouldn't be holding it on for more than, like, five minutes. So. Okay. How do you know how long is enough to kill cells? Um, that's something I would have to research a little bit more, but my guess is just a slow pass is enough it, over an object like this. You just, some like this, fully encase it with the light, and then it's enough you can pick it up. Don't worry about it. That's great. I think it's a good product. Mm -hmm. I, you, okay, good job. Okay. Okay. I'm Megan. Um, I am creating a product for Easy Cooks. Um, so, what is Easy Cooks? What does it do? Why would somebody want to buy this? And how much does it cost? Um, basically, what it is, it's a rare Excalibur and Pizzazz pizza cooker. And it's a different kind of pan that you can buy, kind of like an accessory. And you can put it's flat. So you can put the cookies on it and stuff rather than having the little bubbles in there so that it's easier to scrape the cookies off the pan. So it'd be basically like one of these pans and then it, it has a little notch right here, which is this piece. And then it just sits on the thing and just kind of squibbles. So it's a flat pan that you can make delicious foods right on your presto pizzas pizza cooker. There's no need to have to keep opening your oven to look to see if the food looks done because you can watch it cook right in front of your face, hence the cookies. And it's approximately 12 inches wide and about an eight of an inch deep dark pan. So what does it do? Easy Cooks is a flat pan to use for your pizzas pizza cooker. You can cook many different foods including so cookies, french fries, tater tots, french toast, cinnamon rolls, bread sticks, all kinds of yumminess. And then why would you want to buy this? So, I, my kids love making stuff and I hate cooking to heat up the house. So, you don't have to preheat and wait, you just stick the thing on there and turn it on and it goes. That's nice. Um, it's easy cleanup. We also include our parchment paper, which just pops out, you just pull it out. And then you just put it right on there, pop your cookies on there or whatever else you want to make. And then this is telling about how much it costs. So the pan itself was $1.48 you got from Walmart. Um, the bolt was $1.82 and the nut was $1.49. So I just got them from the hardware store. Um, the total is $4.79. So I was thinking if you sold them for $8.99, you'd make $4.20 in profit. Well, not considering your time, but... Um, and then the additional accessories, the pre-cut parchment paper is $1.07, and then the paper container itself is $1.07 as well. So, in conclusion, everyone loves food. It's affordable, the kids love it, and you can enjoy some easy-made cookies. Questions? Does anybody have any questions? Anybody? Do you, have you tried french fries? I have not. Okay. I've tried the cookies. We tried those little um, potato things, potato skins, and then obviously pizza. I'm, we're going to try cinnamon rolls, but I didn't want to bring them in because they're very sticky. Mm. Is it kind of like air frying, or do you... No, it's like, so there's a heater on the top, and then a heater on the bottom, and then there's a little pin, which is what this sits on. And then it just spins, and while it's spinning, it heats it up from the bottom or the top. You can also change the settings on it, so if you don't want it in, like, dual mode, you just want the top to cook or just the bottom to cook, you can do that as well. Okay, anybody got any questions on how it works or anything? No? Mm -hmm. Okay. What? She got her to... Good. All right. Good job. Over here, okay? Wherever you want. Okay. This is your show. All right, my name is Lydia Martin, and I am here to talk about how we can relax during the pandemic. <laughs> so, how do we relax in a normal day? We go out with friends, we have dinner with friends, or we hang out at home. Most people are going to choose option one and two. 
Um, home is probably not our first option, but during a pandemic, we're forced to be home. So how do we relax during a pandemic if we're forced to be home? We stay home with our family. Family members are, are, are part of our entertainment. It's what we're stuck with. But <laughs> is there another way to have fun? Is there another way to relax when our home is our work? It's everything that we do. COVID's not going anywhere, so how do we do that? So, what if we had a lounge? What if we had somewhere that we could have a focal point in our home, that we could congregate around, we could have friends if we so choose to, uh, we can do anything we want with it, it's up to us, it's customizable. So you can hang it on a wall, it can stand alone, hold up to 16 glasses here, oops, here, and then these are wine racks for wine glass stems. It holds 12 bottles on the bottom there, and you can change the shelves up and down. You decide what color, what size you'd like it to be, and if you want to hang it outside, you can social distance with your friends and have a little lounge outside for yourself. You decide where you get to relax, you decide how to relax, and who you want to relax with, even if it's at home during a pandemic. What it's going to cost, so pallets, generally you can find them free, but just for the purpose of this, we say they cost $10, Screws to hold the shelves in are seven, paint is 10. The oak shelves in the middle are gonna be $17 for a board. So total it's roughly $44. And if you choose to market it out, you can market it from 60 to 100 depending on the size you wanna give. What do we want as people? We wanna spend time with our friends. We wanna relax and recharge from our busy weeks. We wanna enjoy our life. So how can we do that? We're gonna cope with the pandemic and have a lounge in our own space. This is how we do it. I'm with you on that. <laughs> Questions? Oh, I forgot to take my mask off. That's yeah. I was going to tell you, but that's okay. Go ahead. Ask a question. Me? I don't really have a question. Okay. Uh, okay, that's not a full palette, right? No, it is. It is a full yeah. palette? Oh. So it's, it's a small palette. Yeah. Mm. yeah no. It's not like the huge ones. And you, so all you did, you got a... Oh, it had the extra boards on the top and the bottom like that? Yeah, those were there. So I added boards on the bottom here, and then I'm going to put boards on top with, um, like, an indent to hold glasses. Oh. And then some boards there, and then cutting out the stone slots. And, you know, you could put crown molding on the top, too, with, you know, a oh. taller one. Yeah. And then that, you could put shorter glasses right, up there. Right, Yeah. She has ideas. Yes, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes. How do you move the shelf? The shelf, so that you have to do, like, there's a screw on the side, and you can just pull the screw out, and then the shelves, they're stuck in there, you just, like, tap them out and move them down. It's not, like, slide out, because you want to be able to hold it. I'm thinking of a bottle. That's going to be pretty heavy. So it's screwed in. And how many bottles did you say it holds? <laughs> I think 12, but I'm just guessing. Like, that's my, if you want to put bottles here and there, and then put glasses up there, You've got it. Flip around. Twelve would be enough, probably. <laughs> <laughs> I think you can survive a twelve. Mm -hmm. Ten bottles? Ten bottles? Uh, Charles six, estimates six, twenty. Ten. ten. Okay. Why don't you uh, use the planks from the pallet itself to make the shelves instead of cut, paying seventeen dollars for like a good work oak shelf? Because I wanted to have make sure that like nothing could fall through in the back. Like if you're going to hang it, like you're going to have glass bottles or something up there, uh -huh. I wanted to make sure that it was going to be secure so I didn't add, and I had that board at home already, that extra uh -huh. shelf wooding. Although you could just use like a second pallet if you had Right, that. you totally could. It's just, it looks prettier with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you, you could really stain hard. them different yeah. colors. Yeah, you can do. What kind of stain did you use on it? I just got like a quick dry paint and then sanded it back off. It was mm -hmm. supposed to be navy, it's cubby blue. Not. Oh, not what we it looks pretty navy <laughs> from here. So. Does it? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Is it animal proof? Cat proof? Oh. oh. Uh, how do you cat proof something? I'm just asking. Mm -hmm. Well, when. So, this is just my prototype. We're not done with it. But um, I guess next semester, in the back, there's going to be. So that you can hang it on a wall, there's going to be a board you place on your wall at an angle. You put the board up and it's cut at an angle, and then the board on the back is there. Will also have a, a joining so it can just slip over. So, I mean, if it's not on the ground, mm -hmm. you've got your cat. Yeah. yeah. The cats don't drink, so. 
My cats do climb. Okay, I'm not things down. Okay, very Thank good. You. Ready when you are. Hello, I'm Pamela Wright. How many of you, due to COVID-19, work from home now? Or are retired and sit at home wondering, what day is it? Have you ever lost track of time? Well, today I have something that can help you with that. I have an analog clock that not only tells the time, but it also tells the days. Here at Right Time Company, we, had, we take pride knowing that we can ease your mind and help you with the common everyday <coughs> dilemma. If you, yourself, have had times tr trying to remember the day or have had a loved one that might have, an analog clock that has a, hand, a day hand has many benefits. For instance, taking medication on time, making and keeping appointments, and feeling secure or oriented without having to ask someone else the time of day or what day it is constantly. These all can have a big impact on someone's physical and mental well-being. It allows structure, routine, focus, besides reducing anxiety about the time of day and what day it is. A right time company has designed a clock face that is easy to read and also lets you know what day it is. It's also an easy reminder to know if it's a.m., noon, or p.m., as you can see around the clock. To make this wonderful clock, the materials you need to have are wood for, for the frame, a wood board for the face, stain to for the wood boards and the face clock board, a table saw to cut the wood, a drill to drill the hole in the middle of the center of the face board, decal for the face clock board, a clock mechanism with a brass washer and a hex nut, clock hands, day hand, hour hand, minute hand, and a second hand, and two AA batteries. This sturdy clock is made of solid red oak boards, and here is the assembly of the wood frame. How do you make a fine clock, you might wonder? First, you need to cut, the, cut and stain the boards, including the slits for the clock face. Drill a hole in the middle of the clock face, stain the clock face board, and apply the decal. Assemble the boards to make the frame and insert the clock face. Assemble the clock parts into the clock board and insert AA batteries. Here is a detailed view of how the clock parts are assembled. Attach the clock movement mechanism onto the back of the clock, inserting it through the drilled hole on the clock face board. Secure the clock movement mechanism on the clock face board by applying the brass washer and a hex nut on the front of the clock face board. Third, insert the day hand on the stem of the clock mecha movement mechanism, then insert the hour hand, then the minute hand, and lastly, insert the second hand on the stem of the clock movement mechanism. The cost of making the day, day clock are the clock mechanism, the clock hand, and the assembly are $29.99. The wood for the frame is $12.99. The wood for the clock face, $4.49. The nails for the nail gun are $2. The stain, $0.32. Cents, a decal, $0.10. Cents, and the labor, $24.75. So the total cost would be $74.80. And 64 cents. Now, you might say there's other types of clocks and calendars that do the same thing. There's the flip card tabletop calendar, which is you can buy for 15 bucks. And the pros are it's easy to read and it costs hardly anything. However, if you if you have to remember to turn the ma manually to be effective and you forget that each day, wouldn't you forget to flip the, the tabletop calendar? Or you could buy the Keep Track of Days Not Time Clock for $39.95. Its pros are 
It's low cost, easy to read, but it doesn't tell you the time, and it doesn't tell you if it's a.m., noon, or p.m. By buying a clock at Right Time Company for $99.99, you not only have the exquisitive premium wood timepiece, but also a very useful and informative analog day clock that tells you both the day of the week as well as what time it is. Our clock is very easy to read and it can help ease anxiety and stress of knowing what time and day it is. Don't we all need a little less stress in our lives today? Thank you. Questions? Does it illuminate night? No. Oh. You have the, to put it by light. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice looking. It's very I, yeah. yeah, very professional looking and uh, and um, one of the things that uh, if you buy in bulk, you can get uh, your clock parts a little bit cheaper. You can get them down to about $24. So that would knock about five off. I think we could sell 10 of them, don't you think? Yeah. So they're very cute. And Another option is you could probably put a glass piece in here <coughs> instead of the wood. And, and it would make a different look to it. Yeah. Can you hang it? Can you paint it? Hang it. Yeah, um, you can if you did on the back. However, it's pretty heavy because of the wood, um, the solid wood boards we used. If you had a lighter board, you probably could. On the back, you had to have a thin piece because of the mechanism only allows you so much to do. But there's a lot of different options you could do. You, you could just do the board without framing, you could do the glass, you could do... Um, the, um, the board by itself, I tried that on a thicker board, however, the mechanism wouldn't go through. And um, the board frame at least helps hold it sturdy, so... Mm -hmm. But we could counterbore the square mm -hmm. so that it could go in a little bit farther. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so a lot of ideas, and that's what's cool about this is like when everybody gets together, Everybody's got an idea of how to improve it. Originally, so. I was going to counterboard this with a thicker board onto this, but then I thought it would be sturdier with the frame. Mm -hmm. It looks beautiful. It almost looks like a fireplace. You could put little <laughs> stockings <laughs> on it for Christmas. <laughs> so, okay, good job. Yeah. So, I'm Drew. My project I did. It's the articulating arm lamp. It's pretty much just a desktop lamp that the arm can move around so you can reposition where you want your light. And then the light is also removable, so you can take out, use it like as a flashlight or something, or just move it wherever you need it. It's just a magnet that holds it on there. And there's just my assembly drawing of it. So what is it? desktop lamp, it's made out of PLA, 3D printed plastic, and then just a LED light that I just bought off Amazon, and just some basic hardware, I get the magnets holding on, and then this is just a standard quarter 20 bolt holding the two pieces together. And then, you know, like I was saying, if the light's removable, you can use it, and wherever you want the light, you can move around, you know, or take it with you. And then also, the base is just like a flange, so you can bolt it down to like a table or a workbench or a desk or wherever you want. Or you can just leave it freestanding. <clears throat> Features, you know, like I said, the arm articulates, moves around, the light's removable. And it's just unique, it's different, you know, it's got the, the hand that holds it. Some potential uses, you could use it, you know, in a, in a classroom setting like this on, on your desk or something, or in an office space, or like in a, in a garage, I'm thinking like a mechanic you can use it. You know, if you're working on a car and you need the light somewhere, you can just grab it off of there and go look. Or you can move it around on the workbench to see what you're doing. Where I got the idea from, so we did the lamp project in CAD 2203. Well, I did design a unique lamp, and this is what I came up with. I don't know how I liked it, I wanted to improve on it, so I figured I'd do it for my mood project as well. Design process. So let's start out with just a rough sketch that you see up there. That was, that was my very first sketch of it. And then eventually improved, made several more better sketches. And then a model of it on SolidWorks. So I had three models of it. And then the final was made the, the drawing of it with the exploded view and all that. So 
problems I encountered while I was making it that I can improve on later. So the base, it's a little bit top heavy, kind of wobbly. So if I was if I was to refine it, I'd make the base a little bit bigger so it could stand up on its own. And the arm also doesn't fully move as far as I wanted it to. It, it bottoms out on the plastic here. So I would, I would fix that. And then also the magnet is just glued to the hand. I kept having that fall off, so I might come up with a better way to mount that. It's usually working for now, but I was having issues with it before. And some potential future additions I could do to it. I think I can make the light rechargeable. Like, so just run a cord up to it and have it be like a USB or something that you can plug in. So when you when you put the light back on it, well, I might have to recharge it. Because right now this is just a battery in it. So eventually the battery would go dead. And I was thinking you could also do multiple arms of multiple lights. Just make it bigger and better, you know. So you could have multiple versions of it. Yeah, that's pretty much it. One more thing I didn't include on the on the PowerPoint was the cost. I mean, this was all just 3D printed plastic, so I mean, it's maybe five bucks worth of plastic. And then the light was like two dollars online. Uh, it's just some basic hardware and stuff. So it costs under ten bucks to produce. I think I could probably sell it for twenty to twenty-five, somewhere in that price point. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Okay, I got lots of questions. Anybody got questions? PLA's, that, that's like the more primitive stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Could you, would you be able, like, to make ABS, ABS? Yeah, you could do ABS. I, I didn't think it really needed to be, because, I mean, it's not. I mean, PLA is decently strong. This is, there's nothing really that's like a structural part here, so, I mean, it, it works for what I needed. You could do ABS, though. Did you make the hand, or did you find it? The hand I found, I, I, couldn't, I didn't model the hand. Hey, why? If you the can, if you can steal it, why not steal it, right? <laughs> well, because then you saw on the assembly drawing, I, I modeled it up just on the basic, like mm -hmm. the whole blade. But, well, the hand is really cool. Yeah, I like. Yeah, the I figured hand. the hand made it unique, made it different. And did you model the base then too? Yeah, everything else I modeled just on SolidWorks and the three D printer, my printer at home, the two the two links. So there's the actually base. four pieces. Yeah, these two arm pieces are separate, and I just <laughs> bolt hold them together. And then this flange is a separate piece as well. This is supposed to spin in here, but I mean it does, but I made it a little tight, so I would increase the tolerance on that if I was to redo it. So if you bolt it down, you could turn it too. Mm -hmm. And now on that slide in front, uh, before that, um, you kind of went through it fast, but there were different ideas you had, and I saw a skeleton. Yeah, that was the other, I forgot to mention that. I was thinking you could do multiple versions of the arm. You could do like a skeleton arm or make it look more human. I'm sure there's, there's different ways you could do it. Just make it unique, you know. Yeah. Give it some variety. Make some different you could even do it. it after like a cartoon character where it was like mm -hmm. a Mickey Mouse hand or something yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. I'm sure you could find plenty, those somewhere. Plenty of options. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. pretty cool. I want to buy everyone. <laughs> okay. Anybody else got any questions? Uh, do you think it would be better if it wasn't a hand or do you think the hand is necessary? The hand's not really necessary, I mean, whatever, it just, it made it unique, it made it different, but it doesn't really have any functionality to it. Well, one of the things that we do in the spring, we usually do it in the fall, but this is a different world we live in now, is we, uh, the marketing people will send out a survey and give different options, and they'll, they'll, they'll poll about 100 to 200 people, and it'll have options on there, or other, where people could suggest things and stuff like that. So you could make different versions, and because mm -hmm. we're 3D printing them, you know, you could make the arm, yeah, make and then the and then have, uh, you know, even at the fair, you could say you want the hand, you want a skeleton, you want Mickey Mouse, or mm -hmm. or whatever. So a lot of possibilities. So mm -hmm. really great. I, I like it. Okay. All righty. Good job. Yeah. When he started that.